Hello, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. I hope you're enjoying the segment so far. It's been a pleasure bringing them to you. My guest in this particular segment of Points of Light Radio is Owen Snowden. Mr. Snowden is a member of a number of fraternal organizations, but today he is here to shed some light on the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes, which he is a part of. Now, just to give you some insight, the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes, or Buffs as they are called, is one of the largest fraternal organizations in the United Kingdom. The Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes was founded at the Harp Tavern in London, England by the artist Joseph Lyle and comedian William Sinet, along with some stagehands and theater technicians in August of 1822. The Buffs lodges exist in Britain, Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Middle East, India, Africa, Gibraltar, and Cyprus. In other words, pretty much all over the world. Now, membership in the Buffs is open to all males over the age of 18 who are willing to declare that they are true and loyal supporters of the British Crown and Constitution. Now, that's interesting. There's nothing that says they have to believe in God or any God for that matter. There are four degrees to the buffs, and the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffalo used the name City for their lodge rooms and City for titles of the various officers. The order's motto is No man is at all times wise, their maxim is justice, truth, and philanthropy. Well, let's have Mr. Snowden shed some light on this, shall we? So, if you're still hungry for knowledge and you're still seeking for light, just trim your lamp and follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Mr. Snowden. You all right? Welcome to Points of Light Radio. Nice to be on the the show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, you were a member of the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes. Why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself first? Uh, well, my name's uh, Owenry Snowden. I'm, uh, I've, I run a page called Fraternal, Fraternal Masonic History. I uh, discuss uh, about different fraternities, such as the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffalo, Orange Order, to the Freemasons, to the Oddfellas. And some you might never have heard of, like the Ancient Order of Druids. Um, basically, I talk about these uh, organizations on that page to educate people, uh, hopefully try to bring people in and also educate the general public because I believe our history is important and it should be talked about. And people, it's a, you know, and it shouldn't be forgotten. Uh, a bit more about myself, I'm uh, in about several different organizations from Freemasonry to the Buffaloes to the Odd Fellows, to the Odd Orange. Uh, I'm a member all together with all these organizations of about, let's say, 19 lodges, which seems quite a lot to some people, but I've heard there's other people who have been in more. And you um, really enjoy being part of that? Oh, yes. I love every minute of it. I love I love just staying active. See, uh, a lot of it has a lot to do with help. Like, I notice a lot of people get obsessed with it like myself but it's I, I found it in a good light because it helps me in other daily struggles and stuff and where do you find time to be in all those different organizations 
Uh, basically, I try to keep like a schedule, like a little diary and stuff, and I try to keep it all written down uh, on my phone, basically, uh, and just try to make sure nothing conflicts with other things. So let's say one meeting could, one organisation could meet once a month uh, on a Sunday, and another meets on a Saturday. So at, um, like just previously, just being, I was supposed to be at a meeting. I was at a Buffalo meeting, then I was supposed to be at a. Royal Arch, uh, Royal Arch chapter meeting for the Orange, then a degree for the Royal, the Imperial Grand Black chapter of the British Commonwealth, then an Orange Order meeting again, and then another Black Preceptory meeting. So you can see, like, I, I basically start from like let's say twelve o'clock, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have finished all that until about nine at night. But. Um... Make sure you say, you say you have a blog as well? Or yeah, something. yeah, I have a Fraternal Masonic History. Okay, and uh, and you have a page for all these other organizations you're involved with? or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's hence why I'm involved in a lot of them. Uh, hence why I'm involved in a lot of them is because I love the history of all these different organizations, and I thought to myself, like, oh, I want to join this one and find out more what these rituals mean or what uh why they use that as their why that was so so historically important to them and stuff like that some of it can also make be a cultural sure you send thing. me the links to these because i'll put it in the yeah, yeah uh, certainly i'll put it certainly. in with this segment i will definitely put it in with this segment and uh but yeah that but what drew you to the royal antediluvian order of buffaloes well, that's I can, uh, basically what happened with that was my grandfather was a member of the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes. Uh, I'll be just call it Oreo Beach for short. Um, <laughs> basically, his brother was a member, William Snowden, uh, or nicknamed Billy. And basically, he one day offered my grandfather to join the order and says, and my grandfather went, ah, not for me. He says, oh, come on, come on, try it. You know, you might enjoy it. And my grandfather's still a member to this day. Because, yes, he's a compliant member, I should say, because once someone joins it, they're a member for life, uh, unless they're expelled. So basically, uh, my grandfather joined, and when I was young, we were watching Star Trek one day, and I was sitting there, and I was like, oh, what's that thing on? He's uh, one the Klingons had on, you know, the sash. And my granddad went, oh, I've got a sash. Do you want to see it? And I says, oh, yeah, granddad, certainly. Uh, so we went up in his uh, room and opened his... Uh, cupboards and stuff and he says have you ever seen one of these ones and it was a fourth degree uh, roll of honor oreo bay sash um and i says oh what's that he says now when she get a bit older i'll tell you so as the years went on and uh, it still played on my mind but as i got older i thought what was that and one day I, I went to my grandfather and i says what was that and he says oh it's the oreo b and i says all oh, right could i join that he says you can, but it's up to you. I don't want to, because he didn't want to push us in that direction, you know, like, because it might put us off. He wanted to see was I w willing to go the extra step, an extra mile. So as I went the extra mile and got in contact with him, I sadly got in contact with him. And I mean, I, s I sadly couldn't get in contact with him for about a year. And then I finally got in contact with him through someone down south uh, called Rick Reed. Uh, and basically from that, he contacted someone in Newfoundland, Newcastle, and I basically joined through that, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, I'm currently, uh, actually, I'm currently nearly at what my grandfather is. Uh, I'm currently a Knight Order of Merit, which is the third degree. Yeah, and he's currently the fourth degree, so it'll be interesting to see that. <laughs> Well, tell us about the REOB then. Let's talk about them as an organization. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, well, the REOB, uh, the Royal Antediluvian Order Buffalo, started in 1822 in the Harp Tavern opposite the Dory Lane Theatre. Uh, you might be thinking, why was it called the Buffalo? Uh, it comes from an old song, We Chase the Buffalo, uh, which was quite popular at the time of that of the formation of the order. Uh, people say it is older. People say uh, possibly could, you know, they're the aristocratic and 
people who believe in like uh, the occult is side of it all they believe it could go further back to like Egyptian times Roman times and stuff like that there's a lot of theories on it uh, like Darwin's theory he believed it could be older but uh, yeah so uh, yeah but and where was this Harp Tavern exactly? Uh, down London. It, it all originated London. down London. Like a lot of organizations such as like the Freemasons and stuff like that, they all originate in London. Okay. And what exactly do the RAOB do? Well, we're a, benev we're a benevolent organization, meaning that we support our members and our members' family members, but we also do charity work. Uh, which is our not our primary goal, but our secondary goal. Um, so we basically help, um, let's say if a member was ill health and couldn't walk, um, we would, the lodge, the, old, the lodge would uh, approach or approach the members and say, well, look, there's a fellow member in our lodge. He's uh, currently can't walk. Could we get him a wheelchair or something? So the lodge will decide and vote on it. And nine out of 10, they will get them it. Once they've got that, uh, they could then, or if they, but then they say maybe you can't uh, push it up a hill much and we need an electric one. Then they could apply to like a provincial Grand Lodge and they would get then uh, some money off that to help towards it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, brothers helping brothers. You do charity basically, work, yeah. but it starts in house. And that's beautiful. I think that really is. Yeah. Now, I understand you talked about the degree system. There are four degrees. To the REOB. Uh, yeah. Tell us about them. Uh, well, the first degree, there's four degrees in the Royal Antidilumin Order Buffalo. Uh, the first degree being a kangaroo, or known as a brother. The name kangaroo denotes, comes from uh, an old ritual which is long, long out of use, uh, which you can possibly find on the internet, uh, where members would hop around the candidate. To, it was basically to think, oh, what's going on here? This is a bit weird, you know, and put, put a bit of scaremongering on them. Not in a not in a sinister way, but in like a comedical way, because yeah. a lot of people don't realise, but the RUB originates from actors and stuff. So it was very big. It had to be a big performance, a wow factor, so they did that. Then you've got the second degree, which is known as a certified primal. Uh, a certified primal, uh, you must earn. It's not something which is just given. Uh, the second degree, the primo, uh, you have to go through, you have to learn a few things such as the obligation, declaration, opening and closing a lodge and the rules and you've, the rules of the order, basically. Uh, once you are, once you think you're ready, uh, then you can approach the lodge. The lodge will do a lodge of instruction, say, are you ready? And then you'll go in for an examining council, which is a side uh, organization, a side order basically in the Royal Antigua and Order Buffaloes. Uh, once you've done that, um, you then hopefully, if you pass, which some people actually don't and they have to reset it a few times, but you know, there's, there's ways to help brothers and eventually they do pass. Um, but once you then become an, a primo, you then wait three, three years, three to four years, three to four years given how long you, uh, that's the minimum. After those, you then, if the lodge deems you worthy, you, you are raised to a knight. Now, I'm currently a knight order of merit, which you are then given access to knight's chapters, which is a side order in the RLB. Uh, after four more years of that, you then are eligible to be raised to the right honourable role of honour. Uh, so, basically, you then become... Let's, for example, my grandfather, he's a Royal of Honour. His title would be in the Lodge, the Right Honourable Sir Thomas Henry Snowden on the Royal of Honour. Um, after that, that's the fourth degree, and that would lead you into access into the assemblies, the Royal of Honour assemblies. Um, and after that, uh, that's it. Those are the four degrees. It can take, a lot of people get shocked when they hear it takes 10 years, basically, to get through all the degrees. But it's it's not so much uh, it's not so much a race. It's more of a learning experience. And <laughs> well, I always say about that. We've both been in the military, right? Uh, I currently haven't. I've only been in the. the Get that corps. No, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was Fair enough. In the, uh, so you've been in the cadet corps. I've been in the Canadian yeah, yeah. military. 
there's something to be said for time and rank. You don't want to rush through these degrees. I think you'll agree. Yeah. You need to earn that time and rank. You need to get the experience to go on to the next rank. Yeah, yeah. So, That's I mean, exactly right. Something to be said for that. I agree. But like many fraternal organizations, the buffs are accused of being, shall we say, Freemason-like. Now, I understand you're a Freemason. So as a Mason, would you agree with that comparison? Were you, or would you say the buffs are more standalone, very unique? Uh, yeah, I would say we're very unique. See, everyone sees the Masons and the buffs. At one time, people believed, and some still believe this day, you can only be one or the other. It's completely wrong. You can be part of it, both, like as I am myself. Uh, but the biggest uh, misconception is, are oh, they the poor man's Masons? And yeah. the Masons, you know, it's complete. Yes, Maybe to an outsider that can seem that because you say there's more like the working class man in a meeting in a club, in a private room in the back of a pub, and then you've got another uh, organization meeting in a big temple. You know, it's but where you've got differences is stuff like regalia. Yes, we wear aprons, but our aprons cost a lot more than like let's say a first degree apron in the mates in the buffs is a lot more expensive than the first and then oh. the second and then the third. Uh, ours are a lot more neat and there's a lot of differences like uh, we don't believe in religion we don't believe in a supreme being we believe in uh, we don't believe in gambling uh, religion politics or any of that uh, so it's you can see the differences already with uh, the masons believing in a supreme being we don't you don't have to believe in want to be a, a, a member of the REOB but there is some similarities, like you should be loyal to the Crown and Constitution. If yeah. you're a Mason in the UGLA, you are, should be loyal to the Crown and Constitution. Uh, stuff like that. So there is similarities, but there's, there's not a lot of similarities, if you, if you get my gist. Like the, the history of different art degrees are completely different. Um, like arts degrees are all open, that like you can literally buy the book online, have a look, and they're open. Uh, the only secrets we have are the signs and passwords. The Masons, they like to keep their rituals and stuff secret, you know? Mm -hmm. um, how did COVID affect the buffs? Oh, it sadly it did affect the buffs with membership. Uh, a lot of our members sadly passed with the COVID and stuff. Uh, it was a big shame. We, I, f I can't even think of the number. I think it was in the hundred we lost out of uh, book laws and upwards. Uh, but it didn't so much affect us. And that was the only sad side of it all. And of course, people's families suffering and stuff. That was, you know, but it also in a way, I don't want to say helped, but it opened a lot of older members' minds to the use of Zoom, like what we're using. Zoom to... Uh, Skype, stuff like that. A lot of virtual lodges start appearing. So members who, may, and this is something which is currently getting discussed about, members who can't attend lodge due to being housebound or in hospital or some form of care home or whatever, they can might suddenly be able to re rekindle the light of Buffaloism and come back and join us because uh, we need the membership, but they, it's, they need the comradeship and it would be great to have them back. So with that saying, I think COVID did a lot of bad, but it done a little bit of a sprinkle of some good because it added um, the ability for us to meet virtually. It opened these elder members' minds to technology because a lot of people, as you might be in the societies yourself, you'll say that uh, elder members aren't very, how can I say it, progressive with technology. They're, they're quite uh, old guard on it. They're like, no, 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 I don't want to touch this uh no, 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 we don't do virtual. No, 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 we don't, uh, we don't need a printer. We don't need a computer. We don't need to uh, do minutes on a uh, computer and stuff. But you do, you know, move on with the times. It's, it, it's cost efficient and it, it helps. Uh, it, it's helping bring in more young people because people are like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I've got visit a lodge in Cyprus like I have and sitting in my own house and still be somehow become a member of that lodge, you know. So it's done a lot of good, and it's it's done some good, but it's done it sadly some bad, you know. 
but the bad's outweighing the good in my eyes. But that's because we've lost members. Good Did members. Lodgers close? Did any lodges close on account of it? Uh, well, once the COVID happened, all lodges ceased until uh, the COVID. Because we went in a lockdown over here. Yeah. So once that happened, we all thought, right, what do we do here? Um, we've all, all the lodges. So basically, Grand Lodge of England and other banners just agreed that keep your lodges like. Cease, we had to cease all activity anyway, but once the lockdown started, look, they basically stopped, uh, how can I say it, basically when it, they started to simmer down, it, then we start opening our lodges again and stuff, but because of memberships, members dying, some lodges may have folded. That's the problem. There's not much, uh, I can't really answer on that, to be honest. Oh, good. Okay. Well, what do you feel that the RAOB has done for you? For me, it's helped uh, my mental health a lot. Uh, it's helped me, how can I say, it's helped me speak up a lot more and be a lot more uh, proud of what I'm doing and what I'm saying and stuff like that. Uh, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like You learn a lot of wisdom from a lot of older members. They, they might not see that. They may say, ah, shut up, I'm talking a lot of rubbish, you know. But... To you, you like you, you're not you're learning the younger generation a lot of wisdom, and I like that kind of aspect, you know. And it, a lot of the members don't say that sometimes, but they don't realize a lot of young members do. But for those who are thinking of joining the RAOB, what would you say to them? Uh, well, do it. I'd say if you're 18 and well, well support of the Crown and Constitution, male, uh, there's a female auxiliary branch, uh, but that's I've nothing to do with that. Um, it's its own, it's its own organisation. Um, uh, if you're 18, well, for the Crown and Constitution, male, then why not seek out your local lodge? Go on. It's just a quick search on the internet, REO Bay GLA, and they'll point in their direction. If there's not a GLA Lodge, a Grand Lodge of England one, there could be another banner one. Because there's other banners, see? There's like Surrey Banner, Essex Banner, there's Kent, Kentish one. There's been loads of them over the years. One's in New Zealand, it's even in Canada, you know? But you'd strongly encourage them. You would definitely say it could do a yeah. lot for them. And But um, what else I could say to young members is, uh, yeah, just actually, that's just it, really. Well, why don't you uh, tell us what other fraternities do you belong to? Just name a few. Um, I'll actually tell you. Uh, I belong to the REOB. Uh, I belong to Freemasonry under UGLE. Uh, I belong to the Odd Fellows. What? I belong to the Orange Order, the Imperial Grand Black Chapter of the British Commonwealth, um, the Knights of the Golden Horn. Um and a couple of other ones I can't think of at the moment. <laughs> wow. And you've got to come back here and talk about those. <laughs> oh yeah, certainly. I love there. having my guests back. Oh yeah, man. It's some of these organizations, man, the history will just blow you away. Like for instance the Knights of the Golden Home, they're then like most societies have shovel orders and stuff. And a lot of them go based around Knights Templar and stuff like that. Well, this one, the Knights of the Golden Horn, went, no, 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 no. It's not to do with that. <laughs> well, uh, basically what we'll do is, well, we, we, we want ours to be unique. So what they've done is they've done it around the Golden Horn River, hence the Knights of the Golden Horn. Uh, basically, they were the Knights what broke. You know, during a siege, uh, the harbour would have a massive chain around it, basically stop ships mm -hmm. coming in. They broke the chain, hence why there's a broken chain on the Knights of the Golden Horn's uh, like logo and stuff. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I, uh, I definitely look forward to that. So, Mr. Snowden, I appreciate your time today and uh, all the best to all you the best. and uh, the Buffaloes. Thanks for having us. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Owen Snowden, brothers and sisters. How do you feel about what you saw there? I 
want to once again reinforce that next to the Freemasons, the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes or Buffs is the largest fraternal organization in the United Kingdom. Some things I took away from this interview are that it's interesting once again that Mr. Snowden has mentioned fraternalism in his family, his grandfather having been in the buffs before him. And uh, if you recall, at least anywhere between two and four of my guests have mentioned family connections to these various fraternal organizations. Uh, we will definitely have to have Mr. Snowden back here. And in fact, he, we have set up a time for that. Um, I will, you're going to see the link to Mr. Snowden's webpage in the detail section of this particular se segment. Uh, I also want to point out, and I would be remiss if I didn't point out that uh, I did try to get hold of some of the Canadian Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffalo uh, chapters here in Canada and was they were very unceremonious in their refusal. Let's just leave it at that. And I'm, unfortunately, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. I, uh, but it is getting late here. I hate to part with you today, but we are going to have to uh, move along. But before I go. I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. You can, my Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the links to my Spotify channel and my Points of Light Radio store in the details section of this podcast. I once again want to draw your attention as well to Mr. Snowden's the link for his web page. And I also want to point out once again that Points of Light Radio is available to advertise your fraternal store or event. You know how to get in touch with me. But sorry to brothers and sisters to part with you again. But until next time. Just step into the light.